Okay, it's a new week. We are back again with some more Dark Souls stuff. Last week we completed the Dragon Slayer armor from Dark Souls 3. Oh, oops. Oh. And today we're going to be doing one of the sadder characters from Dark Souls 1. There are many. This guy really has quite a tragic backstory. It is Pinwheel. And engage jolly cooperation. Like we did with the Dragon Slayer armor last week, we're not just painting this guy, we will be designing a base with some spell tome books and a workbench with a skeleton on to kind of represent how you find him when you walk into the catacombs as he's hunched over working on his bench, trying to perfect his necromancy. So this is an STL from the STL Smith who you can find on Etsy. He has a selection of awesome awesome Dark Souls stuff and other games as well. If you're interested in printing and painting your own, I'll leave a link in the description. But first thing we need to do with Pinwheel is we need to prime him. And I'm not gonna prime him black because his cloak is black. What I think I will do is I think I'm gonna prime him with some dark gray. So here we are primed. I went with a prime of Mechanica standard gray around him and then I sort of sprayed a bit of gray sear towards the top of the model as well to get a little bit of a gradient on this prime. I'm actually gonna pop Pinwheel to one side because I think it'd be good if we designed his base so that we can get that drying whilst we're painting him. And like what we did with the Dragon Slayer armor last week, I took my saw, I took some wood and I glued together this sort of like little stand that he can be on and exactly the same as last week i'm going to take some foam i'm going to cut some tiles out of it and we're going to create a flagstone floor that we can start building our little scene around there's our beautiful base we just need to let that pva glue dry and it should only take a little short while and then we can move on and get it primed. Lovely, so our PVA glue has dried. We've got our base. So over the foam, like we did with the Dragon Slayer armor, and get some of the old Mod Podge. And we'll just get it all over the foam. Right, so there's our base Mod Podged. We need to let that dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. Over to one side you go. And whilst it's drying, we can make all the little bits and doodads and fun stuff that's gonna go on the base. In this little box, I have all of this. And these are lots of books and a table. Uh, the table, the leg's broken off of the table. That's sad. Well, you know what we can do? We can fashion a new leg. And we'll fashion a new leg out of foam. See, every imperfection, you can use it for learning, I guess. Good as new, perfect. So what I have here are just tons and tons of books. Because when you stumble across Pinwheel and you get to the cutscene, you see that he's working on the bench. And on the bench, it's a skeleton. He's studying and practicing necromancy. Because his sad tale is that his uh, wife and his child died and he's been trying ever since to bring them back by learning and studying necromancy. Sadly, what occurred with him learning necromancy and trying to bring them back was he merged himself to his child and his wife. So that's why you've got the three masks of the father, the mother, and the child all merged into one. And then that's the only thing that he's able to replicate through necromancy is himself, which is why you fight multiple copies of Pinwheel. It's a very sad story. So with all these books, I've primed them with gray sear. So I'm gonna be using some different contrast paints, different browns, maybe some blues. Maybe some purples, maybe some orange and reds. Yeah, kind of just making it up. There's no real hard and fast rule to what I'm doing. I'm just picking different contrast colors that I have at my disposal. So I've got a variation of standing, like book towers, single closed books, different varying sizes, open books, just to kind of mix it up, make them all a tad bit different to each other. I'm gonna move on and do the pages, and I'm gonna do the pages with some Skeleton Horde contrast, because it will sort of give that nice kind of old coffee stain paper kind of look. Parchment, that's the word. It will give us that parchment look. Uh, 
and we'll come back when I've got all the books done. So I'm just going to do all the open pages with Skeleton Horde Contrast and just finish off painting the other sides of the books and then we'll move on to the table and then get that all glued down onto the base once the base has been primed. So all of our books are dried. I also did our little skeleton with some Skeleton Horde Contrast, obviously. So with all them done, the last bit to go on the base will be the table. So I'm going to base it with a good amount of snake bite leather. Now I'll grab a darker brown, which will be my Gagax sewer. And I'm going to use that to kind of generate some variation in the brown tone. Give us some darker brown shades. We'll pop that off to one side for now. And here is our lovely base, primed with some black. After being mod podged, I'm just going to grab some of the Mechanica Standard Grey and just coat the entire base. Cool. Grayed up. So we've got our base based up. So what we've got to do is we've got to start adding a bit of colour and texture to it. So what I like to do to add some character to stone is do a brown wash and a green wash. Pretty much exactly the same as what we did with the Dragon Slayer armor last week. So I'll just take my brown wash and I'll just start browning this bad boy up. I'm thinking actually because the catacombs look like it's a bit more kind of sandstony kind of rock so I might actually instead of doing a green wash I might do some kind of like bone colored lighter beigey kind of wash rather than it having that kind of like mossy dark rock look. Might try and brighten this up a bit and give it that kind of brighter sandstony look. Cool, so there's our brown wash. We just need to let that dry for a second. So now we've got our brown wash on the base. I think I'll brighten it up with a wash of a batty bone. I've no idea how it's gonna look. Kind of like so. Or oh, that kind of brighter stone look, quite like it. So again, with the washes, got to leave it to dry. I think that's added a bit more color to it. And to tie these tones together, we're going to do a black wash because all these tones are not fully blending together at the moment. And a good old black wash will help tie them together. There's our base. So we just need to let that dry for a ticket. So now the base has dried. Our last little bits of highlighting. We're taking our Dawnstone and our Longbeard Grey. I'm just gonna build up some brighter tones on it. There we go. So what I'm gonna wanna do is start mapping out where I want things to be. I think the table can go here. Here we go. I think the table looks good there, quite central. And then we'll start stacking up some books, I reckon. That is a pretty cool looking base. What are these books? Definitely glad I printed that many books. I think it really adds to the desperation of Pinwheel trying to salvage and save his family. So, last thing to do is paint pinwheel. So I'm going to put this to one side and we can start painting the main fella. So the reason I went with a slightly brighter but not a sort of white primer was because he's predominantly wearing black. Like the cloak is just a black cloak so I just want to use some black legion contrast and if I put that over a dark primer you wouldn't see it and it would be pointless. But instead I'll be putting it over this sort of midish grey because a lighter primer would take a lot of different coats to try and bring the tone down. Whereas this kind of color, I think would work really well with the dark contrast. But again, it's just experimenting with these different types and these different, these different approaches to sort of see what works best. But in my mind, this kind of mid gray primer would be best if I wanted to apply a dark contrast. All right, so there's our pinwheel, coated up with the Black Legion contrast paint. So with them done, the next parts are these are the lanterns. So I'm going to base it with some Mechanica Standard Grey. I might use metallic pigments over this. Do I want to paint it with metallics? Oh, I feel like I will. Yeah, f*** it. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'll make it up on the way. Right, let's get some lead belcher. 
runefang steel and some canoptic alloy because it's a little bit browner got a bit more sort of like bronziness to it got my dry brush got my lead belcher Okay, so there's our first dry brush layer of lead belcher. What I'll do is just go over it with some null oil. Cool, we'll just let that null oil dry off for a sec. Pinwheel, you son of a bitch. I'm gonna move on to the Canoptic alloy color. I'm gonna just start highlighting kind of top area. I'm just picking out highlights on these lanterns. Now I'll move on to our Runefang steel and tuck those right into those brighter areas, generate some much brighter highlights. I think lastly, I'm just gonna dry brush on a tad bit of this Necron compound. Okay, so there we are, we have some lanterns done. Shiny, shiny. So let's base the faces, and we have three of them to do. So one is kind of goldy coppery, which is big, big daddy. And then the other two are more silvery. I'm gonna use a base of Rune Lord Brass to do big daddy. And the other two are base with some lead belcher. And the sort of necklaces are sort of goldy coppery as well. I think I'll base them with some of the fulgurite copper. With some of my fulgurite copper, I'm gonna start adding some brighter tones to the Big Daddy face. I'm just gonna pick out all the little highlights on him. And I think we need some gold up in there. I'm gonna grab some of this Alric Armor Gold, which is a nice bright, shiny gold tone. And with this same tone, I'm just going to add in some highlights to the necklace. Something like that, you know, getting shiny. And the other faces, the face of the mother is a bit more silvery and the face of the child is a bit more alloy based. So I'm going to go with some Iron Breaker for the mother. Very weird sentence on its own. I'm going to use that to just sort of add in the brighter tones around. And for the mask of the child, I use some of the Canoptic alloy just to highlight it and it'll differentiate it from the other two. And I'll grab some Runefang steel just to brighten up the two masks further. And we're gonna add some red to the pendants on the bomb necklace. Last thing to do on pinwheel, my boy, is we just gotta start detailing in some Highlights and shadows onto his baldy. On his baldy. I'm gonna use a mix of Abaddon Black, Mechanicus Standard Grey, and Administratum Grey. So we've got the three different tones for shadows, midtones, and highlights. So with some black to begin, I'm just gonna start mapping out the darker regions. Okay, so there's our blacks mapped out. Now we're gonna move up into the grey, and I'm gonna pick out my brighter points, the sort of highlights. I guess these are kind of like the pre-highlights because it's not the brightest point. I'm kind of just using the wet blending technique as well to go between the greys and the blacks. Just keeping it both layers relatively wet and just cleaning my brush off and just blending them together. And I'm just gonna pop some spots of administratum grey right in the center where I'll find the brightest highlights and before it dries, working nice and quick, just blending it out. Wet blending is a tremendous technique. It's one of my favorites to do, but it is a little stressful because it's kind of time pressured because you don't want to let the paint dry out. But you do get cool, smooth transitions, which is nice. So yeah, we're getting that kind of nice, swooshy, blendy transition, which is cool. And I'm just going to keep working like that around all these creases, adding in this administratum. Not sure if I want to go as bright as white because it's not going to be that much light. So, pinwheel, that is you done, my boy. Which means we can get him on his base. Very exciting to see how it's all gonna to come together. That's pretty cool, to be honest. I'm gonna grab my glue, and I'm gonna get him glued on. 
there we go. There is my lovely pinwheel. Done and done. With his cool little bass, all his tomes, spell books around him for all his necromancy needs. You know, the skeleton that he's testing on on the bench. And himself in the middle of it all. Oh, that is another model from Dark Souls complete. And a pretty fun one at that. To be honest, I really enjoyed making this one. This sort of bass technique is quite fun to do. Piecing it all together to make it look a bit more lifelike than rather just have the model on its own is a lot more fun, I reckon. Um, let me know if it's more enjoyable for you to watch. It's definitely more enjoyable for me to make and it'll be great if it's a more enjoyable experience all round. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you coming to my channel and enjoying the videos, liking, subscribing, all of the good stuff that you guys do. But if you haven't already, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Every like and every comment helps the channel grow more and reach new people, which is what we want from this channel, really. It's what we want to do. We want to reach as many From Software fans as we can and just keep making as many models as we can. That about does it from me. Thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all next week for some more model making stuff. Peace out, gang. And don't you dare go hollow.